It's time to focus on seniors with Helping Seniors TV. The television show designed to make you aware of senior issues and needs, as well as to acquaint you with the resources available to help you age in place and with dignity. Now, here's your host, Joe Steckler. I'm Joe Steckler, and welcome to Focus on Seniors, the television arm of Helping Seniors of Brevard County. Our show is designed to provide you with information on how to develop your own aging and care plans. Our topic today is in-home custodial care, and with me in the studio is Rosemary Barton and Jennifer Helen, co-owners of Seniors Helping Seniors. Welcome, Rosemary. Welcome, Jennifer. Thank and you. before I even ask you the first question about your company, I want our viewers to understand the importance of what we're going to talk about because the type of care that you all provide is going to be an essential part of the Affordable Health Care Act intentions and in how they're designing care because they've gone to what we call Medicaid managed care. And what this means, folks, is that it's an effort to contain costs and narrow a profit margin. And for businesses to stay in business, they have to make a profit. But the cost of medicine, with all of us living longer, generally speaking, uh, we have to be more innovative in what we do to control the cost of care. Now, this managed care, it's been passed by the Florida legislature, and it is in 26 states currently, Florida, California, New York, Illinois included. And what this means is that certain major HMOs and other managed care companies will have companies come in and provide the cost of care. Hopefully they will do it so that a maximum effort can be maintained to keep the people in their homes so that we can keep people out of more costly elements of care. And we've been talking about that on this television show for many years, that the more cost we can, uh, the more cost we, the more we can reduce cost in care, the better off the client's going to be. That's why it's so important for our viewers today to understand what Jennifer and Rosemary will provide the type of company they have. But before we even get into that, I want both of you to tell our viewers how you got started and what sort of prompted you and what this company's patterned after and what you have to go through to get a franchise. Because I think that makes the company even more and more interesting. So, it is. It's, it is okay. special. Um, I was a, a Brevard County school teacher. Uh, for over 10 years, and I had taken a leave of absence, which ended up being a very good thing because my mother-in-law um, ended up having surgeries, and I was taking care of her. And I got an ad for Seniors Helping Seniors and thought, wow, that makes so much sense um, that I looked into it. And the more and more I looked into it, the more I was absolutely sold on the concept of seniors helping seniors. We, it would have been so helpful in our own families. Mm -hmm. um, that I, I just, I fell in love with it, but I wanted to make sure that I was looking at everything properly. So I went to, you know, the source, my mom, <laughs> um, and asked her to look at it for me because she had been a businesswoman for years and she looked at it. And by the time she was done researching it, she said, okay, when are we going to do this? Yep. Said, oh, we, this but, is good. <laughs> <laughs> tell our viewers how this company started. Well, I, I, the more and more we got into it, um, we, we had to go to our home office, which is up in Reading, Pennsylvania, and we got to meet uh, Karen and Philip Yoakum, and they are at the heart of Seniors Helping Seniors and just an amazing, amazing couple. But it started with uh, Karen Yoakum, and uh, I'll let you take that part of it. Karen came to the United States with her daughter when she was going to attend college, and she was widowed, and uh, so she decided to come along and help her daughter get acquainted with the United States. And in doing so, she began looking for places that she could volunteer to find out a little bit about more this more about the country and what we do here. And in doing so, she started working with um, 
some of the assisted living facilities and nursing homes. And she discovered that in America, the children all leave home and go to other places. And so mom and dad are sort of left to their own devices. And she thought maybe this would be what she was to do in America. And her strong feelings for finding something to do in America came from the fact that she worked with Mother Teresa for 14 years in India before coming to the United States. She had started um, giving money to the poor uh, at a very young age and finally learned that the mother was going, the, the money was going to Mother Teresa and uh, then became very close to her. And so the Mother Teresa was her inspiration for doing what she has started doing in the United States. I think that, that sort of sets the stage for the type of company that you're developing. I think it makes it, a difference. It really does. And she, when we sat, you, you sit down in her dining room and she said, you know, not everyone will be given a franchise. Um, you're, you're not buying a franchise. We'll, we'll grant you one. And she really checked us out. They wanted to know who we were and what, what our hearts were about before uh, they allowed us to carry on the name because this is her baby. This is her heart and soul. So she really vets each person, each okay. owner out. But as you have formed your company, have you found that you are able, in fact, to go into homes offering the type of service that you do that will help people stay in their homes longer at a lower cost and still make a profit for yourself? Yes. That's the key. Absolutely. I think a lot of it depends, Jennifer and Rosemary, on how much of a profit somebody wants to make. Um, when we talk about the Medicaid managed care, Florida went to this a year ago, and I predicted then, and I'll say it today on this show, that we will see more problems come about as a result of private Medicaid managed care. The cost will be exorbitant. I am already getting indications that Corporations that are supposed to be providers of the Medicaid managed care are not taking calls for service because they're finding out that while they've estimated that they can, can contain costs, they cannot contain the costs such as they thought they were going to be able to do. So therefore, they're simply not going to give service. And in the long run, the client, the patient will suffer. Exactly. So, having said that, let's talk about seniors helping seniors. And I think one of the things that uh, I was giving a lecture to a group of women at the uh, Freedom 7 Center in Cocoa, Florida, and I talked about your company. And those ladies would not let me leave until they had the phone number for your company <laughs> because they were so intrigued by the fact that you had seniors that would go in and help seniors. Like I used the word, there weren't a young, bunch of young whippersnappers going in there trying to tell an older person what they had to do. Right. And it made a difference. How much of a difference have you two found in using seniors to help seniors? It, it makes a huge comfort level. It really does make a big difference. Um, one of the ladies, just cut jokingly, one of the ladies said, you know, my, the last person who was here didn't know what a phone book was. She wanted to go look up a number, and she didn't know what a phone book was. It was a young person. I'm sure they Googled it. They didn't ever go to the phone book anymore. So we don't think about that, but there is a little bit of a language gap because I probably would also Google something. Mom would probably go get the phone book. So, it's true. so there, there's, there's a little bit of a language difference there. So there's just a comfort level knowing someone who, um, and we really try to match them, uh, so that there's someone who has similar interests. They come from maybe a similar background. Uh, they've been there. They've done that, and and they're compassionate. Okay, they understand. Let's let's talk about the company. What is in home custodial care? What do you do? Basically, we will do anything. I was, Jennifer laughs at me, but I always say we'll do anything soup to nuts because we can do anything to help a senior that is non medical or hands off. So, excluding those two things, we can um, help them around the house, we can help them with housekeeping, we can do laundry, we can make the bed, we can cook, we can prepare meals ahead of time. 
Uh, we can take them to their appointments. Uh, we clean out bunny cages and, and kitty cat litter boxes and, you know, anything at all that a senior needs around the house. We do handyman services. It's really an endless list of things that we can do for them. Can you help a patient put medicines in a, in a box? No, we cannot. You can't that do that. Is that is a one skilled thing we service. That, that, is, would, that would take mm -hmm. a skilled service. Exactly. Because I was thinking when I came home from Hell South Sea Pines after I'd had my stroke, one of the biggest obstacles I faced was getting all the pills in the right Exactly. Box. That could be daunting. It was an enormous task. Right. But um, I think one of the th services I picked up on that you all provide, and I think it's a, it's a very, very useful service, was your transportation service, mm -hmm. where, if, if, if I get it right, you offer your services in a, in a two-hour block mm -hmm. at $18 an hour for the transportation service. Right, correct. So let's say if a person, um, like let's say, um, say somebody uh, knows about our program, Helping Seniors of Brevard County, and they call us from New York and say, my mother lives in Brevard County, Florida, and she needs to go to these doctor's appointments, but I can't be there to take her. I need somebody to go. I say, well, we have the perfect organization. I can refer you to Seniors Helping Seniors. Absolutely. And then what do you do? We um, contact the senior. We go out and do an assessment, and there's no charge for us coming out, but we get basic uh, emergency contact information, basic medic inf uh, medical information. Um, hope we never have to use it, but it's good to have just in case. Um, and then we match her with a driver so that, and we try very much to keep that driver at the same time. We're not a taxi. We try to really make that service personal so that each time that person comes to the door, they know exactly who that is. Oh, it's Judy coming. You know, and they recognize Judy and are very comfortable with her coming and taking her to and from the doctor's appointment and wherever else they want to stop. But they would go, if the patient requested, they would go into the appointment with them and listen to what the doctor oh, said. Absolutely. So that there's another pair of ears mm -hmm. reassuring the daughter back in New York that their mother heard correctly. Yes. yes. And that, that's, that's a frequent request. Yeah. And you get that request all the time? Yes. yes. But see, how many services do that? Or how many people know to call an organization like yours to ask for that kind of service? It's not well known. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. But it will <laughs> <We're> be. <trying. laughs> You're trying. That's the purpose. That's why when we have this television show called Focus on Seniors, we truly want to focus on those programs that will help seniors stay in their homes safely mm -hmm. as long as possible. Yes. And think about this. If, if that mother daughter living in New York couldn't monitor what her mother was doing, if she just had to leave it up to her mother and her mother didn't take care of these things, she would end up in an assisted living facility at a cost of about between five and six thousand dollars a month. Correct. Whereas, if necessary, you could send somebody out there seven days a week, mm -hmm. or thirty days a month at a cost of thirty-two dollars if it's only the sixteen-dollar service, mm -hmm. and you multiply that by thirty, and it's about one fourth the cost of being right. in an assisted living facility. Right. We have a perfect example of that. Uh, we had a family call us uh, from out of town, and mom was uh, living by herself, but she had to take her meds in the morning, and she kept forgetting to take them, or she she was early stages dementia, or she would take them twice, and every time she would do this and confuse the medicines, then she would get sick, you know, not feel right, and she would call 911. And so the fire company was coming to the house on a daily basis. Now, we cannot do the meds, but they had a neighbor who was willing to set her meds in the pill boxes. So we started sending a gal in every morning. She gets there at about a quarter to seven. She reminds this woman to take her meds. So she makes sure that the lady takes the meds out of the box. She makes sure she actually physically takes them. And then she fixes her breakfast makes the bed, get her ready to get on her way for the day. And in doing that, 
her day starts off perfectly and she's fine for the rest of the day. And at 30, you know, 30 days in a month on average, the cost is $960 a month, which is far cheaper than putting her into an assisted living facility. So mom's happy, the family is happy, and uh, she's able to stay in her home. Yep. And um, I don't know how far you've come on this, but you, are you willing or can you talk about the new service you're thinking about doing, a three-hour service? Have oh, you got the, the take me home. Yeah, uh, have you, are you doing that yet? We are. We are. Um, I'm, we're just getting the word out. Um, but it stemmed from uh, a service that we did for a lady who was in rehab, and she all her whole family had come in when she first had her accident. But then everybody had to go back to work, so she needed a ride home from rehab. And when we got her home, we realized the refrigerator. No, she hadn't been home in a month. The refrigerator was a mess, and there were a lot of things that needed to be thrown out. So we went through, cleaned out the refrigerator, got her some groceries. We said, you know, this is really a valuable service. A lot of times, right after you get home from rehab, home health will come in. So they don't really need anybody, but yet they do need a little help just to get over that hump. Of yes. There's a lot to do when you first get home. There's mail to go through and the refrigerator and the groceries. And so we'll come in and do a three-hour service take them home if that's what they need transportation to get back home um, come in clean that refrigerator out get some healthy groceries make a meal kind of get them started you know and if that's all they need that's okay we feel like we've been helpful mm -hmm. you know and if they ever need us again hopefully they'll say oh I remember those seniors helping seniors ladies they were great so we'll get another call yep I think that's uh, one of the really really good things about the type of program that you and your mother started Jennifer um, Perhaps you could also share with our viewers a little bit about licensing. Uh, you know, what what are you all licensed to do? What you, and you know what you really can't do? Can you sort of um, clearly outline for the, our, our viewers what you can do? Let's do that. Um, as I had stated earlier, we can do all of the services that do not require medical. Okay. And our license with ACA states that we can do all of the things like housekeeping, um, cleaning, uh, you know, general cleaning, uh, meal preparation, transportations, um, all of those sorts of things. About the only things that we really truly cannot do is we cannot do hands-on. So therefore, if someone needs help and assistance with a shower, we cannot wash them, we cannot bathe them, but we can stand by to keep them safe. We can even put soap on the washcloth and hand it to them, but they must wash themselves. We can't do the actual bathing. But you can help provide an element of safety. Yes, we can provide yeah. the and safety. And that's so important. Mm -hmm. The other thing I thought was really good, and we talked about it before the show, and I had not thought about this. So many people have a, a leaky faucet or a, or a commode that the plunger comes loose and the water won't shut off. Uh, to call a plumber to come out and fix that, you're looking at a hundred dollar bill. But you have a, one of your services is you you have a handyman that does yes. right. small things like that. Small thing. Things that you wouldn't call a contractor for, um, but that still need to be done around the house. You know, things that we kind of take for granted, but um, getting up and and taking out the batteries, replacing the batteries and smoke detectors, um, changing out the air filters and the air conditioning system, fixing little things around the house that, that really do need to be done. And we have a lot of widows that, that yes. are with us. So yeah. we'll go out and we'll take care of all of those little odd jobs for them. You know, and if it's something that, boy, this is looks like a plumber's job, we will go ahead and refer them to a licensed contractor. Okay. And we, do have, exactly. I'm sorry, we do have the two-hour minimum, which we have for all of our services. So when we're going out to do a handyman service, we always say to them, before you call us, make a list. Go around the house. You know, is there a door that's squeaking? Is there um, a faucet that's leaking? Is there something that's loose? Make a list of everything so that when we do come out, you get your two hours worth. I think one of the things we will do on our new website for helping seniors of Broad County is that we will have a listing of organizations that provide services that will help people fairly. You will be one of the very first list that well, you're already listed there on the, on the service. Thank but you. that's so important that uh, 
that, that, that seniors and those that care for seniors know that there are organizations in Brevard County that operate fairly, they're honest, and they have a mission of trying to keep them in their homes safely. Yes. And one of the things I liked uh, about what she's talked about, Rosemary, about uh, uh, smoke detector batteries thing, so many of us, as we get older, have a problem with our balance. Yes. Uh, very foolishly, we get up on ladders mm -hmm. and we fall off of ladders and break hips and we end up in uh, rehabilitation hospitals or in a hospital for a surgical repair. When you have a service that will come in and safely change light bulbs and do things like that. So that that's so important. Um, and skilled nursing services are not needed to do that kind of thing. Right, right. So I, I like when I looked at I I I I would not remember all these things, but um, one of the things I I lock, you, you you mentioned you do yard work, and you also do respite care. And a thing that I, when I was a director of the Alzheimer's program, I had more requests for people to stay overnight to take care of somebody so a family could get away and take a break. Mm -hmm. Respite, important. respite mm -hmm. care. You you say that you do 24 hour care. Do they do like weekend care too? Do you do it Absolutely. for two days? Mm -hmm. yeah. So let's say if a family wanted to go on a vacation, and they want to take a week vacation. Do you do up that long a period of time? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. What do you do that you don't have in your little brochure here that you and your mother are thinking about that keeps coming out as I ask questions? <laughs> <laughs> what? How do you help people, really? You know, every person is different yes. of, of what they need. So we really go in and we try to sit down with them and say, okay, what what would you find helpful? What do you need? And it, it really is different in every situation. So as we come across different situations and we hit something new, we think, oh gosh, you know, I'm sure other people need this as well. Let's, you know, let's make sure that we let people know that, yes, we can help with this. You know, that's how we figured out we, we have people who had bunny rabbits. We have had people with cats that we help. Um, We're doing a dog walking service right now for a lady who broke her ankle. You know, every... Every house you go into, the situation is different. You know what you're describing is very, very expensive care or case management, which you all do at a fraction of the cost of a professional care or case manager. And those care or case managers don't have the ready in-house assets that you have to direct to fixing the problem. They have to go out and find somebody like you all that will go in and fix the problem. But you all can do it right away, which I think puts seniors helping seniors a cut above what we're seeing on the market right now. And, I, and don't be afraid to say it because I, 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 I wanted you all. In fact, I contacted you several months ago and said, you're going to do this show whether you want to do it or not because I knew what you were doing was helping people. And why shouldn't we publicize a good service that's an honest service? That makes, that makes a lot of difference. Um, let's see. What am I going uh, to... Oh, we have a little word called ADLs, Activities of Daily Living. And can you explain what those are so our viewers understand? I know that I know that you are not pay, Medicaid will not pay your costs, but organizations under managed care have contracted you to go in and do these ADLs, and I think it's so important because a family that has a need for what you're going to talk about can ask their doctor to prescribe that. And it can be paid for through Medicaid. They can hire you through that. Well, so what are ADLs? Uh, the activities of daily living, um, things like meal preparation that we can do. Um, laundry we've been asked to do through the, the long-term care program. Um, you know, transportation to and from doctor's offices, uh, that is needed. I don't Getting know that dressed. 
So we can't help get dressed, though, unfortunately. But you can put but clothes out. We can put the clothes out. Uh, yes. yes. A lot of people, they, people have Alzheimer's. They might try to put a pair of pants on over their head. But you can get them organized. That's the, that's the whole right. thing. Make sure right. that, that Seniors help me. Seniors yeah. helps people get organized so they can start their day. How about closing a day? Do you go in and help people get ready for bed? Yes. Mm -hmm. How do you yes. do, what do you do for that? What kind of a service is that? Well, often, a lot of times when people have us in at night, it's, that's their time where it's, they're lonely or it's, it's nerve wracking. The rest of their day is taken up mm -hmm. by activities, but in the evening it's when they're alone and maybe they're get a little bit more anxious. So we'll come in at night. Um, maybe it's making dinner um, and then cleaning up the kitchen and doing a, th a few things, making sure that the house is closed up. Um, mm -hmm. Everything is, is shut tightly. Um, some, in some cases uh, this, this weekend, it's making sure that they're actually in bed and everything is good. And then we, we see ourselves out and make sure the door is locked behind us. So do you have many patients that uh, suffer from Alzheimer's that you take care of? Yes. Oh, yes. Do any of those live alone or do they have a caregiver? Both. Both. Yeah. Both. Both. Mm -hmm. uh, the other part about your service that I think that uh, if people haven't gotten it by now, they should, is that uh, you are an extremely valuable safety net for a family that is caring for a family long distance. Mm -hmm. And I yes. think that, that makes a, a, a big difference. And, and I think that's where the seniors that you employ uh, come in and make it very, very effective for people accepting your care. Right. Have you found people that did not want to accept the care? Yes, honestly. You know, it's it's hard for for some folks to accept help. You know, when you've been so independent for so long mm -hmm. and you've been the one who's cared for everybody in your family. You've had eight children and you're always the one who's in charge and always the one who's taking care of people. It's it can be hard to accept help. Mm -hmm. Do what do you do? Do you sort of she sends mom. I send mom in. I, send you. I do. <laughs> <laughs> when we know, you know, when we're going into a family situation, a lot of times the caregiver will just naturally talk to me. The daughter or the son will naturally talk to me. The senior will automatically talk to mom. So we, if we know we're going into a situation where the senior's hesitant in receiving services. She's, okay. she's the <laughs> We're out of time, and I, it, it, it's been much too quick. But I want to thank you, viewer, for watching today's episode of Focus on Seniors, and I hope you've learned something from this presentation. And if you have questions or comments, please call us at 321-473-7770 for more information on senior care and resources. Visit our website at helpingseniorsofbrevard.com and be sure to watch our radio show, Focus on Seniors, which is shown every Thursday morning on radio station WMEL at 9 a.m. And every Thursday morning, we're in Florida Today newspaper with our Focus on Senior column. I'm Joe Steckler, and I thank you for joining us today for Focus on Seniors. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. Joe. Thank you very yeah. much.